Alright, so next one. Given r squared equals 36 sine of 2 theta, I want you to test for symmetry with respect to the uh, line theta equals pi halves, the polar axis, and the pole. Pause the video, unpause when you are ready to check your work. Okay, so if I test for the line theta equals pi halves, I plug in a negative r and a negative theta. Negative r squared becomes r squared. If I plug in a negative theta, it's sine. So I can pull the negative out in front. r squared equals negative 36 sine of 2 theta is not the same as the original. Therefore, it is not symmetric to theta equals pi halves. What about the polar axis? I plug in a negative theta. Uh, I already know from my work above that it is not going to be symmetrical because I'm going to end up with the same thing. r squared equals negative 36 sine of 2 theta. What about the pole, though? This one does work because all I do is plug in a negative r. So negative r quantity squared becomes r squared, which is the same as the original. So I get r squared equals 36 sine of 2 theta. So yes, it is symmetrical to the pole. Next problem, I want you to graph the following. I want you to identify any symmetry and find any zeros. Pause the video. Do all that. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so my scale is obviously off, but the graph should look like this. Uh, it should have been nice and symmetrical, though. So I know that the symmetry is with the polar axis, and I can see that by doing my test of just plugging in a negative theta. And I can see if I plugged in a negative r anywhere, then it would not be symmetrical. So the only symmetry is polar axis. I know that I have a bunch of zeros at pi halves, 3 pi halves, 5 pi halves, 7 pi halves, 9 pi halves, 11 pi halves, uh, for 3 pi, or I'm sorry, for 3 theta. So if it's theta, then the zeros are at pi 6, pi halves, 5 pi 6, 7 pi 6, 3 pi halves, and 11 pi 6. So these are all of the zeros between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, now I used the symmetry to only do half of it um, and then reflected that symmetry. Now I needed to come up with numbers that are good uh, for cosine and the fact that it's 3 theta, so I used a bunch of pi ninths. So 0, pi nines, 2 pi nines, 3 pi nines, 4 pi nines, 5 pi nines, 6 pi nines, 7 pi nines, 8 pi nines, and 9 pi ninths. So when I plug those in, I get uh, values of 2, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 2. And again, this is clearly approximations because I did not have uh, a nice uh, circle graph to use. So I had to make my own. Uh, hopefully yours looks a little bit nicer, but maybe not because, again, since here I had to use pi ninths, those are not marked off on uh, those graph sheets that I gave you. Anyway, the point is that I can come up with this lovely sketch. So, these lead us to some of our special polar graphs that we're going to want to know, love, cherish, and uh, somewhat worship, but that's a little a little far, so maybe don't worship. Just just like and appreciate. Uh, so the first one is uh, limicons. I may not be pronouncing that correctly, I'm not sure. Um, so when are these going to occur? It's going to occur when we have r equals a plus some b sine theta or a plus some b cosine theta or r is a minus b sine theta or a minus b cosine theta for a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. Uh, the ratio of a over b determines the actual shape that we're going to end up with. So we have uh, four different scenarios, basically. If a is less than b, I'm sorry, if a over b is less than 1, then we are going to have this inner loop shape. Uh, and we saw that a couple of slides ago. Um, when we graphed 2 plus 3 cosine theta. So here's that inner loop shape uh, for the limicon. And there, uh, in that case, the a over b was less than 1. Um, if a over b equals 1, we're going to get this heart shape. This is called a cardioid, uh, where it does not form a loop. It forms... Uh, an indentation with a sharp turn. If a over b is between 1 and 2, we're going to get uh, kind of a dimp kind of a dimple. Um, and if a over b is greater than or equal to 2, then it's going to be almost flat. It's not exactly flat, but it's almost flat. Uh, so these are our different scenarios. All of these pictured here 
uh, would be examples of cosine because they're symmetrical to the polar axis. The sine curves would look the same, but um, they would be symmetrical to the line theta equals pi halves. Another famous shape uh, is the rose curve. So this is the one that we just graphed uh, on our last example, r equals 2 cosine theta. Here is a better picture of it, uh, but this is what we call a rose curve. Uh, and so our different scenarios for the rose curves, we have r equals a sine of n theta or r equals a cosine of n theta, where a does not equal 0. Uh, if n is even, then the rose has two times n petals. If n is odd, then the rose has n petals. So for our example here, n is odd, it is three, therefore there are three petals around the rose. Uh, so here are a few examples of sine and cosine curves. So if we have r equals a sine of two theta, then this will have four petals and it will look like this. If we have r equals a cosine of three theta, it'll look like our previous example r equals a cosine of 4 theta is going to look like this. r equals a sine of 5 theta looks like this. Uh, and then our last, but not least, special uh, polar graph that we're going to look at are lemnis, lemniscates, I'm going to say. Um, again, I could be, yeah, I probably am pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, I'm not going to grade you on your pronunciation. This is not an oral test, um, but recognizing what the graph is going to look like. So a graph of r squared equals a squared sine 2 theta or r squared equals a squared cosine 2 theta are called lemniscates. Uh, and this would be an example of r squared equals a squared cosine 2 theta. Again, notice the symmetry to the polar axis. Um, and if it was a sine, then it would be, in this case, symmetrical to the pole. So different than what we're used to seeing with sine curves. Uh, sorry, jumped ahead. Um, so a review of our graphs. Circles, I didn't spec uh, specifically point these out, except for we did cover them at the beginning, or we saw some examples at the beginning, and I told you it was going to be a circle. So if we have r equals a cosine theta or r equals a sine theta, those are going to be circles. Uh, limicons we just talked about. Rose curves we just talked about. And lemniscates we just talked about. Um, so those are our special polar curves. So what else did we learn? We learned about tests for symmetry with respect to polar curves. So we test for symmetry with respect to uh, theta equals pi halves, the polar axis, and the pole. We know how to find zeros of trig functions, therefore we know how to find zeros uh, with polar curves, and we want to understand our special polar curves. That is the end of part two. I know I got you very excited at the beginning of part, uh, at the beginning of this lesson, part one, when I was talking about the end of the semester, and then, bam, I hit you with the two part notes. I apologize for that.